My mission is to try to train people, train students for one thing, and then teachers to go out and infect the rest of the world with this, this extraordinarily communicable disease that I think the whole world should share. If language is looked upon as a disease, then let's all catch it. trying to establish here is to say make people speak the language use a system that elicits 65 responses per student per hour under the best conditions with a teacher who's moving whose choreography is well defined workshop the context is to liberate people but there's a risk I could liberate too much and I could get to the point where they would reject me as some kind of fanatic unless I established the validity of everything I do this method is a dramatic interpretation of language infused with an avalanche of energy and an excessive stretch of the imagination all presented to the students with a warm embrace and an invitation to join the action Hall pokes its tower through the cover of America's New Hampshire woods. Students and teachers from around the world come here to learn the language teaching methods of Professor John Rassius, who teaches at Dartmouth and directs its language outreach activities. In the late 1980s, Chinese educator Lin Yu Dung enrolls in a John Rassius language workshop for teachers. I have come here to Dartmouth College to disprove the adage you can't teach a no dog new tricks. For 30 years in China, I was a professor at the Beijing Normal College of Foreign Languages. My job was to train high school, or as we say, middle school English teachers. Wang Tianzong. I have come to Dartmouth to master the methods of Professor John Rassius who has achieved astounding productivity in language teaching. The Rassius method is full of sound and activity. <laughs> His passion is to motivate students to want to speak a foreign language. <laughs> In China, our teaching methodology has its roots in a traditional educational system almost 1,500 years old. The ancient Chinese student earned his governmental position by passing an examination in the classics. So he spent years memorizing these works. This ancient process of memorization even today dominates most of our English language classrooms. In China, 64 million students go to English classes each week. This is the map of China. This is the map of China. Say that, ah. Map of China. Map of China. For 500 years, we have been teaching foreign languages by this process of repetition to imprint the memory. In this primary class, the teacher speaks, the child echoes her. The 
child dares not speak on his or her own initiative, that would be punishable behavior. In middle school, learning English becomes painful. I was ex ex expecting to, to stay with me. Most students are passively serving time, not really following the performance of others. I was still at the office at the, at the time. Many are tortured by the fear the teacher will publicly shame them if he discovers they have lost contact with what is going on. There is no place here for any joy that often accompanies the spontaneous interplay of meaning through a foreign language. Dean Xiang of Beijing University wants to rectify this situation. When I learned about Professor Rossius, I determined to invite him to Beijing University and introduce his method to China. Professor Rossius' method would rid our present classroom atmosphere of boredom and improve our students' ability to socialize and communicate feelings in foreign languages. So early in 1987, John Rassius comes to Beijing to conduct workshops for some 300 English teachers from all parts of China. He has learned he's been given a Chinese name. Lin Mei. <laughs> My name is Lo Lian. Lo founder of a new system. <laughs> Barriers, fear, and inhibition face our students when they study language. And there are too many barriers, too many physical barriers between the students and the teachers. So I'm going to ask you all to stand up and get rid of all the barriers. We do not want any barriers in language teaching. The only thing between teacher and student should be love, should be air. There shouldn't be desks or obstacles, right? First, I want to give you a lesson in a language you do not know, Greek. Now, here we go. Melene John. Melene John. Acoustic. Melene John. Acoustic. Acoustic. Melene John. Pos, pos, selene. Melene John. Pos, selene. Melene John. Melene I want to teach you some Greek so that you could get to feel what it's like to learn a language for the very first time. And remember, if I come to you and I look at you, then I do this to get rid of them, and then I do this, you don't answer, you answer. All right? Bros, 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 stamata. Yirise. Yirise, 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 keep yirise until I tell you to stop. Yirise. My drill assaults their senses. It makes each of them come alive to learn. Here, there's no place to hide, no place to slip away. The trapped in the vibration of movement, the resonance of energy itself, they've got to be awake. People learn by movement, energy, languages, energy. Every word can be a five act drum. <laughs> Come <laughs> on.
Okay, pogo stick, bras. <laughs> Snap out! <laughs> That's beautiful, thank you. There's a Chinese saying, you are not a hero until you have climbed up the Great Wall. This wall, which is a magnificent man-made structure, also is symbolic of many man-made obstacles against learning languages, communication. It separates people. What we'd like to do is... Blow away the barriers, blow away the obstacles. Yeah, but now perhaps uh, the Great Wall now, now become a bridge between the foreign people and the China, and, and the people in China. Marvelous, bravo! <laughs> You five are the official assistants, right? You're going to be the ones who will have little groups who will tell them what they're doing correctly and what they're doing incorrectly. It's important that you do the training, not me. It is extremely important that it doesn't require the presence of me, but the will on your part to bring in new methods for the teacher. I want to teach uh, only one sentence. Uh, I want to go. 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 In previous sessions, our five instructors grasped how dramatically my drill increases the speaking frequency of students. The quick pace with which the teacher teaches in some drills is really amazing. Now our instructors coach the teachers in the precise execution of the drill. They know it can raise the number of times a student speaks from four times an hour to 65 times an hour. To go. To go. To go. To go. To go. Good. And when the teacher uses the drill, nothing can distract the students from instruction. I'm too nervous. The drill keeps a student on the edge of his or her seat, not knowing until the last second whether he or she will be called on next. It's extremely important to catch the students off guard. Never to be predictable, because if you're predictable, the class dies. Voice, voice, snap, snap, point, point, look, look, <laughs> voice, voice, snap, snap, point at me, and now look at me. Voice, snap, don't look at me, but point at me. Now look. Put yourselves in the position of students who don't know a word of English. And you've got to be able to teach them very quickly the message. Now the teacher will come up and simply say she likes dancing. I like dancing. Dancing. Now, what's this? Now just look and listen to me carefully and look at me carefully. Now, dancing. Now, puppy, 
Luca! Luca! Oh, just like this? Okay? Now just this color. This color. Gilson? Yes. Look, dancing. Yeah. Now, please read after me. Dancing. Bouncing. 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 The drill Bouncing. develops a rhythm Bouncing. because you learn language by rhythm, Bouncing. not by words, not by memorizing Bouncing. vocabulary. Bouncing. 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 Save some words, for example, like that. Read up to me. You don't have to say. Uh, read you up don't to have me. to yeah. say. You just use your gesture. Uh -huh. And don't have to say. Listen. Listen to me. Uh -huh. Thank you. Just use Anything? your gesture, and then do this, do this. Yeah. You don't have to say. Read up. To me. Read up. To me. Yeah. No. Okay. Okay. Thank Very you. Very good. Thank you. <laughs> All right. We have done this before. Now I want you to make a sentence of. Uh, David Leo's middle school English class in Beijing. Next one, also the same one he passed. At this school, hand. six teachers are trying to teach 1,200 students English. The quality yes, of the yes. instruction is traditional. In the house and writing with the pen. Okay, he is teachers the are house. judged by the amount Today, of written text they cover. He is Chinese friend, Derek. A small number of students will take college entrance examinations in English, and their scores reflect on their teachers. Despite the pressures of crowded conditions and a lockstep system, David likes his job. Some people, they think that to be teachers is just like a babysitting. But I want to be a teacher. Some of David's colleagues in his Rassius workshop are having trouble imagining how they can apply the Rassius method in their middle schools. It is impossible for us to teach our students English in this way because uh, in middle schools we have a lot of text to learn. If we teach the lesson like this, we can't finish the task. Uh, by the, end of last, uh, by the end of this term. Teachers and students, so they are used to the traditional ways. So we need time to change both teachers' uh, uh, ideas about uh, teaching and the students' ideas about learning. Middle schools, ways of teaching English or, or Japanese or some other foreign languages. I think it will be taken, uh, there will be a change. Uh, you see, uh, hundreds of years ago, did you dare to think going to the moon? But now people have already been to the moon. Your teaching method can be uh, taken within in China, in middle schools, in colleges, anywhere. Sometimes I'd like to give some of the people in that workshop a cup of coffee, too. There's the one woman all the way to my left. Nice lady, you ever watched her? Sometimes, after lunch, now you'll see her this time after lunch, she usually looks at me and then... What does she mean? What? What does she mean? Well, either she's tired, or I'm boring, and I think it's she's tired. <laughs> but most of them are wide awake, most of them. <laughs> Watch her this afternoon. All the way to my left, all the way. She coughs a lot. She never participates. Because you see, every time I look at her, I call her, she starts. Hey! <laughs> 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 and I say, wait, 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 wait. No problem, no problem. Let her go, let her go, let her go. Maybe you got a. She's allergic to me. Is that what you say? got a cold, maybe. Cold? She. And it comes on when I look at her only? No, 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 no. It's no, the no, weirdest no. cold in history, medical history. Marvelous. My. She's got a cold, so, so she often coughs. Sometimes, no, not as always as you said, sometimes she didn't cough. She just put her hand on her mouth. She's a lovely lady. Lovely. Yeah. lady. Sometimes it means that she wants to, to laugh. To laugh? Uh -huh. 
but he didn't want you to see it. Oh, really? Uh, sometimes it's a... So I'm mistaking <laughs> that for a yawn. And for a yawn. Mistaking it for a, a yawn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No. Sometimes it's two, sometimes it's not. <laughs> this is a short dialogue. We have to have feelings when we read it. Are we almost there, Mom? 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 Oh boy, I can't wait. Oh boy, I can't wait. Now, the class is ready to perform the scenario. <laughs> Dee Dee. Oh boy, I can't wait. Are we almost there, Mom? No, dear. Uh, a few more hours. Johnny, move over, squishing me. Oh, shut up, Susie, bug off. <laughs> oh, damn it. It is raining again. Now, your kids, be nice. Your dad is trying to keep his eyes on the road. Let's sing a song. I rain no night, the day I left, the weather it was dry. The sun so hot I froze to death, Susanna don't you cry. Here's some juice. I have to go to the bathroom. Okay, hold on. We'll stop at the next gas station. <laughs> We're staging a Chinese opera. The drama gives context to new vocabulary. It also demonstrates how culture can be introduced into a language lesson. When several teachers took me to a real opera, its precise body gestures jogged my imagination. And I wondered, could we teachers tell our own story through this medium? Ivan and I are in love with dancing girl. Mr. Fu also loves dancing girl. Dancing girl comes in. Ivan and I fight. Ivan and I kill each other. And Mr. Fu runs away with dancing girl. Ivan's first day, I coax him from his refuge among his colleagues. Speaking English. I move up front. Speaking English is fine. Not to make anything. Speaking English is fine. Yes, uh, speaking English is fine. I encourage him to act. I can go. <laughs> Say that again. <laughs> first, uh, do action. At first, I am nervous. Direct, direct, direct. Oh, you're a traffic cop. <laughs> I feel self-conscious. Clumsy. Is the class laughing at me because I appear foolish? In time, he comes to relish the fun. You're on a roll, Ivan. You're on a roll. <laughs> it's your turn. Congratulations. Thank you, Ivan. Good luck. I realize the class likes to watch me in action. The others affectionately nickname him Shaman, Silly Bear. As we witness Ivan's personality change, we feel moments of high excitement. Ivan becomes a major player. And you'll never be the same again. Now, I'm going to combine a dictation with some real cultural information. Namely, where I come from, where I teach. And take down as many words as you possibly can. 
This is an outline of the state where we live. Hanover is a small, very small village in the state of New Hampshire. It is located on the east bank of the Connecticut River. In the summer, it is hot. In the winter, it is colder than in Beijing. The village is over 200 years old. All the life of the city, of the village, depends on the university. In the winter, December and January, is it cold? It's very, very cold. It's much colder than in Peking. All the life of the village depends on the university. Now the class corrects it, and you as the teacher control the intonations of the language. Hanover is a very small village. Close the ear. Please practice reading like that, and you'll see that your delivery is much smoother. Go. All the life of the village depends on the university. All the life of the village depends on the university. Now, you could prepare a microlog on anything. I have 109 of these micrologs that last just one minute. But in one minute, you could write all of this, and that's all that's necessary during each hour. Riding Fu bicycles from the small apartment she shares with her husband to her John Rassi's workshop at Beijing University, where she also teaches. I write more quickly than usual because I'm so excited about getting to the Rassi's workshop. In my mind, I relay what happened yesterday in class and I imagine how I shall apply what I'm learning from Professor Rassi's in my own classes. I feel like a runner at the starting line, waiting for the starter's gun to go off. Professor Rushes is training us very systematically how to arouse students' interest, how to make them relax when they are learning the language. I learned my English in Peking University. I listen to the VOA Voice of America uh, every morning to train my ear and to listen to, to learn some culture, to something about um, the states. Now the Chinese are most famous for their storytelling genius. So who in this group could tell me a good story? This is one device then that can be used again. First two letters, words that begin with CH or any other two letters. All right, come on up. Let's see you do this one. In that order, please. Yeah. Start here. Church. Okay. Uh, here's a, a very old church. Suddenly, one day, there's a chicken who dropped from the chimney into the house. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the chicken happened to be on the chair. <laughs> After the chicken and standing on the chair, the little boy came to the chicken, but he came to the uh, uh, he came to the chair backwardly, so he haven't seen the chicken. Uh, he just uh, suddenly sit down on the chair. Suddenly, <laughs> the chicken shouted, yeah. and then the boy ran uh, ran away. Good, thank you. The problem in applying this method yeah. might be time. Yeah. You have li yeah. limited time to finish a, a certain amount of a yeah. class. Yeah. yeah, well, yeah. I hope that properly used, this will so, save you time. Yeah. The question really is, how does one learn language best? That's mm -hmm. the basic, simple question. Now, enough research, enough practice, 
Enough time and thought has been devoted to this very simple question to establish the fact that languages are best learned through the oral approach. The more they participate in the class, ultimately, the longer they will retain the language. They're emotionally involved. When you do everything with all of your senses blazing, when you're alive, when you come alive, the students will not fall asleep. These 50 techniques create the same atmosphere as when we first began to learn our own language. When as infants, we had fun performing games of language with our parents. Summer. Interaction is playful, nurturing, rewarding. is free of fear. Inhibitions vanish. This is just ideas about the method of techniques. Numbers. Right. Uh, the way of teaching numbers. Right. And the first two letter words. Right. Misplaced words. Right. Boy, it's complete. What I would suggest you do is try all of these techniques out, develop them to your own speed, uh -huh. make them work for you. This is not intended to mold people. Essentially, we want to liberate people from those techniques and methods that were non-productive, so that they could function as live, authentic human beings who are exciting teachers. Il est fort. Acting experience is very helpful because it shows you very simply that when you communicate with other people, you can't have inhibitions, you can't be fearful. The same qualities that the teacher has, the actor has. Sing the song. We want the teacher and the students become involved together in one major production every single day. <laughs> This is the best of all possible worlds, even though I've lost an ear. The character Pangloss from Voltaire's Candide. Every time I cough, I spit up a tooth. <coughs> what techniques you use as an actor, you could also use as a teacher so that the classroom is your stage and the students are not the audience they move from you but they're part of that play why don't you spit out a tooth but use some chalk that tastes better than that of course the real test is how my chinese colleagues will apply my methods to their own classroom situations Mei Lin teaches English to second-year college students. Some students get prepare their lessons very well when they come to my class. They just want to sit there and listen, and just like a duck, waiting for me to feed them. The cold eyes. The cold eyes. The cold eyes. Work in such a way that everyone is responsive and is drawn into the dance of learning. Good. The cold eyes. I used Russia's methods in order to check how much has been achieved by the students. Human brain expanded at the rate of a cubic inch every hundred thousand years. Human brain this is the second time I used these drills. Really, I'm not so experienced. Quick way. Uh -huh. At an accelerating rate. After one month, they will get used to this and I'll be no, more no. efficient. Those who have good memory and foresight goes around. Good. This book has good memory and very good foresight. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
If a student makes a mistake, go back and get the correction. Good. Expand. Develop my techniques. Why? Rapid. To work for you. Wisdom. Wisdom is... Before students read the text in the next lesson, I use psychological coach to draw students' attention to the key words in the text. So many. So many. Overcome. Good. Very good. Overcome. I like that word. So what kind of person do you think he is? Foolish. Foolish? The students are so excited, and I feel excited myself. <laughs> After the class, I feel exhausted. In the old, in the traditional ways, uh, only the teacher, uh, the actors, or actress. The lesson in the class is only the teacher's lesson, not ours, not our students. But I think uh, um, using the new method, I think we can be more uh, active. This method, we can. Uh, we can speak and do a lot of things in the class. We are the actor and actress. I think we didn't act at all, frankly. It was to open up a reserve of energy that they thought they were not allowed to expose a letter of the sea. It was uncouth, like the nail that sticks up always gets hit down. In Japanese proverb, I think this is the equivalent in Chinese. And if you conform to a mode that says don't show much life in order to preserve a kind of warped sense of dignity, then obviously no one's going to be energetic. I think we've done that. I think we've released them from that. send rain to extinguish fire. Yeah, and tiny people are the descendants of dragons. Right. And the, the emperor is the son of dragon. You see, like an <laughs> archetype of thing in Greek mythology. Yeah, the same dragon could appear in every nation's mythology. They plan this to be a, a heaven on earth. So it's sacred space. Forbidden to all but the emperor's court. They haunt this place. The ghosts linger. Ah, our lions. You know they have protected this building for 600 years? There were no lions in China when these were made. So our artists had to uh, rely on imagination in creating lions to frighten away anyone with evil intentions. They would frighten Powerful, them. Powerful, yeah, powerful guys. Nobody could get into the city in the first place. Uh, jump on your throat. Never. In the forbidden city, they never left this place, right? The emperors. And now we have 24, 24 emperors have lived, lived here. Yet here. People like us would never have been permitted to step into the forbidden city. Actually, the forbidden city was not totally forbidden. 400 years ago, the Italian missionary Ricci came into the forbidden city. Matteo Ricci was the Jesuit who worked his way to Beijing by teaching his remarkable memory system. Ricci could read just once long Chinese passages in the classics and then recite them, not only forward, but backward. He was really something exciting. He gave us Western books in philosophy and mathematics, and his world map made him famous. The bridge was being built 400 years ago. But the emperor refused to meet him. 
and in 1610 Matteo Ricci died in Beijing without the chance to share his world with China's son of heaven. The moment was very significant because this is a forbidden city for hundreds of years and now it's no longer forbidden. And our American professor comes in here, right in the middle of this forbidden city, and brings the methods we are going to use. Exit out a web and see them again. Wash. And run. Run. Dance. You know? <laughs> Sing. Oh. Right? What? Stream. Wash. Look. Drop. Stream. Wash. Look. If you use body movement to emphasize the stress of the sentence, the students can feel it and they get a very strong impression. Wash. Look. And clean. Play football. Play football. <laughs> play football, right? Now, next one, please look at this picture. Let's say something about this picture. The little monkey was more white. What did monkey do then? The monkey jumped off the crocodile. Then the crocodile swam back. If I compare the method which we normally used before with Professor Rush's techniques, I feel that the relationship between me and the students is much closer than before and this relationship plays a very important part in successful and effective teaching. Eat your heart. Eat it, eat it, eat it. Brush 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 my name is Sai Chen. Good. Go back to your seat. Thank you. Two little black birds sitting on the hill. One named the Jack and the other named the Jill. Fly away, Jack. Fly away, Jill. Come back, Jack. Come back, Jill. Two little black birds sitting on the hill. Gao Peng, would you like to go out? Please. <laughs> What was I doing just now? Yes. You were doing some washing when Gopo knocked at the door. Good. Doing some washing. She was doing some washing, Madam. Watching TV. This kind of teaching brings the real world into the classroom and makes English language teaching close to real life. English. She was speaking English when I... After I attend that class, I act I act in my class and I, I think very natural, very natural. And I often smile at my students, smile at my students. So the students like me very much and uh, take easy. <laughs> I'll try my best. I'll bend over backwards and do my work well. They have a lot of fun in, in this class. <laughs> Uh, this 
sponsor can improve their input. You did a good job. Okay. We have learned some teaching methods, uh, like you, maybe, in a certain degree, in a way. But uh, we can't do, to, uh, do much better. Um, you can do what's comfortable for you, that's what's important. And you do it your own way. And thank you for your teaching, I mean, for your inviting us to the dinner. And um, I'm afraid um, it costs you too much. It is three years now since the Russia's workshop. And uh, since I began using the Russia's method, my students have been learning twice or three times faster than before. So I love it. Over the past three years, I have consistently strived to use Professor Rice's method in the teaching Chinese to foreigners. The results have been impressive. I am good at using Professor Rice's method. My students are very active, more interested. My colleagues are encouraging me to develop Rice's theories in my school. Even after working with the Rossius methods for several years, I continue to find additional new ways to apply them in my classes. My students say the methods are challenging. They are also challenging to the teacher. Several months after John Rossius' workshops, I came to University in England. My studies continue focusing on effective classroom language teaching. If I'm able to achieve my doctorate degree, I will return to China to share these dynamic methods with other language teachers. Since I have been using Professor Rasha's method, I was honored with the title of Student's Most Loved Teacher. The university granted me, in each of the past years, a prize for excellent teaching. After the Rasha's workshop, I began applying elements of the method in my own classes. The result was more exciting classes and faster learning for the students. John Rice's classes kindled my desire to improve further. I came to England to work for advanced education degrees. I'm interested in media teaching and I plan to return to China to use the Rice's techniques to teach English on television. Professor Rassius helped me realize that teaching language is exciting. I realized that teaching of language is something beyond teaching knowledge itself. It's about teaching and understanding between peoples of different cultures. It's worthwhile to be a teacher. Professor Rassius' teaching method compels classes to very high levels of vitality and tension. The teachers from his workshops have returned to their own schools and I hope that a new synthesis between Professor Ross's method and our actual educational situation here continues to bloom and bear fruit in China.